Welcome back everyone here to Monday Afternoon's Update here. My name is meteorologist Hunter on Weather on the Go and in today's weather forecast update we are going to be keeping an eye on significant severe weather for today and on your Tuesday. We'll go over the setup and the timing of the severe storms as well as additional rounds of storms later this week some of which could be severe especially Wednesday, Thursday and then again on Saturday and then we'll also look at some widespread frost and freeze conditions across the northern U.S. especially, but even the central U.S. as we do go deeper into the weekend time frame. So thank you guys so much for joining. If you like detailed, accurate weather forecasts across the United States, southern Canada, and the tropics, this is the channel for you. Make sure to subscribe down below. We'll keep you updated throughout the entire year. Also, be sure to press the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. Let's look at today's updated severe weather outlook from our friends over at the Storm Prediction Center. This outlook came out earlier on, and you can see... We do have two areas of an enhanced risk for severe storms. The main area back here into southern South Dakota, into Nebraska and Kansas, but another area has been added in with an enhanced risk across eastern Virginia, right along a warm frontal boundary that's draped across the Ohio River Valley there through portions of the mid-Atlantic states. So we'll keep an eye on that. The biggest threats for today will be undoubtedly very large hail of hen egg size or larger in three separate zones here. The main zone in the red up here, southern South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, the secondary area down here into northwestern Texas and near the Red River Valley in southwestern Oklahoma but also down here into southern Indiana and northern Kentucky. We'll keep an eye on that threat there. We also have a significant tornado risk. We have a 10% hatched risk for tornadoes. In the yellow dashed lines here, this means that a strong long track tornado, EF2 or stronger, may be possible in this environment across portions of Nebraska down into Kansas, but a large area of a potential for tornadoes across the green, brown shaded color from South Dakota all the way southward to north central Texas through the day. And we also still have a threat for some 60, perhaps 70 mile per hour winds all across these areas highlighted here from the mid-Atlantic back through the Ohio River Valley and into the central and southern Great Plains. We'll keep an eye on that. Let's look at the setup here for severe weather in both areas. We got a warm front draped across the Ohio Valley and the mid-Atlantic. Dew points south of that are in the 50s and 60s. Very sharp dry line across the Great Plains here. This is going to provide the lift for showers and storms. Warm sector here across portions of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma and Texas is open to Gulf of Mexico moisture streaming northward. Dew points are into the low and mid 60s this afternoon. This is contributing to some moderate, even strong instability pockets here across the central and southern plains. Instability values in excess of 2,000 joules per kilogram, even along the warm front over here into the Ohio River Valley, the mid-Atlantic states instability values still around a thousand joules per kilogram, very respectable along the warm front. But what we don't have across the mid-Atlantic or Ohio Valley is a very strong low-level jet stream here into the 850 millibar layer. This is actually going to provide the rotation for those supercells if they can start to develop. And we do have the significant tornado parameter values hitting off the charts right now into western Oklahoma, northwest Texas, up to around 17, 18s out of 10s, and this is significant, but there's a caveat, there's a catch to this. There is a surface base cap inversion across portions of the southern plains, especially with southward extent into Oklahoma, into north central Texas here, and this is going to prevent a lot of thunderstorms from forming. So any storms that form will be discrete supercells, very intense supercells, and again, you could have the highest significant tornado parameter value known to earth but if you don't have you know the storms that develop in that environment it really just doesn't matter so we'll have to look at that let's go to this afternoon's radar uh, depiction here and show you what the radar could look like and you can see we may begin to breach that cap down here into southwestern Oklahoma near the Red River Valley into northwest Texas this afternoon we're talking after three o'clock time frame if that does occur a couple isolated intense supercells very large hail producers and a couple tornadoes may be possible as we go into the evening We'll start to breach the cap further north, potentially across Nebraska, South Dakota there, and especially Kansas. We'll start to see the potential for some intense supercells with strong tornadoes, EF2 strength or larger, 
some very large hail hen egg size or larger there and 60 to 70 mile per hour winds this evening and not everybody's going to see this threat it's not going to be a widespread severe weather outbreak one or two of these storms could be very intense long live supercells and then that'll be it that'll be going you know along with our day here early tuesday morning we could have a cluster of showers and storms across south dakota nebraska and western iowa up near the track of the surface low there's a lot more forcing for ascent there's a lot more lift up across that region so we're going to start to see more clustering of some strong thunderstorms not necessarily severe but maybe some stronger storms with hail and some gustier winds and heavy rain of course as well moving into Tuesday an enhanced risk of severe storms at the 12 30 p.m. update from the storm prediction center essentially keeping that enhanced risk across eastern central and also southeastern Iowa northeast Missouri and west central Illinois with that slight risk still in place across southwest Wisconsin, all the way down through the Little Rock region there into central and even southwestern Arkansas. And we do have to keep an eye on the hail threat on Tuesday. There is a large to very large hail threat, hen egg size hail or larger in these dash shaded lines across Iowa, western Illinois into much of north central Missouri. A strong tornado or two may occur as well, especially in this yellow dash shaded lines here. You could see across eastern, central, and southeastern Iowa into west central Illinois and northeastern Missouri, but a tornado could be possible from southern and southwestern Wisconsin, maybe even as far north as the Rochester area there in Minnesota, all the way south through Little Rock and into the Texarkana region through the day on Tuesday. And the large uh, potential for damaging winds is there as well, a large area for that, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. I do foresee potential for an upgrade to a 30% probability in the red, potentially across the tri-state area here of Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois and future updates from the Storm Prediction Center. We'll have to keep you updated on that. Looking at the setup on Tuesday, very similar to today, except we have the cold front catching up. You can see very warm, moist, unstable air streaming all the way north into southern Wisconsin, up toward the Madison area in Milwaukee. We could be seeing those 50, even 60 degree dew points on Tuesday, and you can see instability not as strong, but we do have a very formidable low-level jet cranking over 70 knots here, even 75 knots up into Wisconsin for Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. And this is going to help to rotate those storms. So Tuesday afternoon, supercells back in Iowa, Missouri, and Western Illinois could acquire some strong rotation. Stronger tornadoes will be possible. As we go through the evening, we're going to see a broken line or a solid line of storms with embedded supercells moving across the Illinois Valley there, the land of Lincoln, all the way down there through Missouri. We'll keep an eye on that. Any storms in that environment could uh, produce a tornado or even a stronger tornado, even outside of that 10% hatched risk area into Tuesday evening. And look at that. The Tuesday evening time frame, we're not seeing a cap on the atmosphere. So the capping inversion tomorrow is not that big of a deal like it is today. So storms will be easily able to develop and become severe. So Tuesday morning at the beginning of the period, storms probably again, not necessarily severe weather ongoing in the morning hours, but we could be seeing some smaller hail, some gustier winds here, maybe an isolated tornado, but I don't think that big of a deal for early Tuesday morning. It's more of the afternoon, peak daytime heating, a band of some strong to severe storms moving across the Hawkeye state of Iowa, through Missouri into Illinois there. All hazards will be possible. Strong tornadoes, very large hail, some very strong damaging winds as well, and some isolated supercells even building back down here toward the Little Rock and Jonesboro, Arkansas area. We'll have to keep an eye on as well. That will move east into Tuesday evening across Milwaukee, Chicago, and Indianapolis. We'll keep an eye on that down toward Paducah and Carbondale, Illinois, keeping an eye on that as well. And then looking at early Wednesday morning, this is gonna turn into more of a heavy rainfall threat for the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, down into the portions of the Tennessee Valley into that early Wednesday morning commute. As we go into Wednesday, another threat for severe weather, a slight risk from Western Ohio into Indiana there, into much of Kentucky there, into Northwestern Tennessee, another threat for mainly damaging winds and hail on Wednesday, but I cannot rule out an isolated tornado threat Wednesday afternoon or evening in that area. And then on Thursday, another slight risk across portions of the Southern Plains. So a very busy next several days of severe weather on the table 
and each round of storms will actually be able to produce very heavy and efficient rainfall and even beneficial rains. For portions of the Midwest, northeastern Iowa, for example, has an extreme drought up near Waterloo, Dubuque, over there towards Cedar Rapids and Iowa City. Those areas will be seeing those two to four inch rainfall totals through this upcoming weekend on Saturday, and that will help to improve some of those drought conditions. And then as we go into the weekend, speaking of that, we are going to have that cold front here kind of stalling out toward the south. This could provide more showers and severe thunderstorms for the Texas Hill Country into the North Texas region, Central Texas and East Texas and across the lower Mississippi Valley on Saturday. That will move even further south and stall out near the Gulf Coast on Sunday. But look at this colder Canadian high pressure system moving down from Canada into the central U.S. by Sunday. And this is going to mean very much cooler air for the middle of April. Late week, below normal temperature anomalies streaming down from Canada southbound through portions of the Great Plains and into the Midwest. And by the weekend, look at that all the way down to the Gulf Coast and into the southeast well below normal temperature anomalies for Saturday and Sunday the 20th and the 21st of April and let's look at those mornings out there folks the growing season is underway as we know especially down here in the Midwest the Ohio Valley and southward and we're gonna see temperatures here in those areas getting close to freezing and especially up here in the upper Midwest the high plains or the northern Rockies well below freezing so a hard freeze Saturday morning and looking at the wind chills up there into the single digits and teens up there into the Dakotas Wyoming and Montana and even further north into southern Canada on Saturday morning morning. And then going into Sunday, look at that. We have the freezing mark going all the way down to Dodge City, Kansas, 31 degrees, 22 degrees up there in Rapid City, and 27 over in Cheyenne, Wyoming, Sunday morning. You filter in some winds? Yes, we could be seeing wind chill values down to 28 into the Amarillo, Texas region for Sunday morning here. So this is the, you know, the start of the growing season. So hazardous temperatures are likely a moderate risk of that happening from the Midwest through the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic here for that growing season. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Frost and freeze forecast for this weekend. Medium blues, you have a likely chance of that's occurring across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, through the Mid-Atlantic and up the New England coast there. In the darker blues, very likely chance of that occurring across the high plains, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, or interior New England near Buffalo up there toward Watertown, New York. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Again, make sure to cover up sensitive vegetation as a widespread frost and freeze is becoming likely as we go into this upcoming weekend. Stay safe. Several days of severe weather ahead. Make sure to have multiple ways to receive watches, warnings, uh, and alerts on your uh, uh, NOAA weather radio, your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, any Anything you can be alerted with watches and warnings on for severe weather will be good for you as we go through the next several days. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like down below, subscribe, leave a comment. Also, I'll be able to answer as many questions as I can, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Monday out there.